We're making a lot of mac and cheese, so it's gonna be a great day. But we don't have one rule. I am not gonna make that sound. You know which sound I'm talking about. This is a family-friendly channel. I'm also trying to improve the classiness of my humor. And I think the worst and the most immature is that that's what she said joke. Anyways, let's get started with the most famous mac and cheese of all time from Teeny. I use corkscrews because all that cream gets all in the hole and... <sighs> that's what she said. So in the video, she used Kobe Jack, mozzarella, and cheddar. I don't have any of those. So we're going to go with half a pound of sharp cheddar, half a pound of never-ending raclette, and a half a pound of string cheese. Toss them all together. We'll set it aside for now. For the seasoning mix, a quarter teaspoon of salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, and pepper, pepper, pepper. I want to collab with him, but I don't think he likes my content. Finally, we'll measure out half a pound of corkscrew. As she put it into words perfectly, the cream gets all up in the hole. We'll also use half a can of evaporated milk. The concept of milk and evaporation reminds me of my dad. Now to a pot we're putting a tablespoon and half each of butter and flour we can move on to the stove on medium low we'll keep mixing it adding a little bit of the seasoning mix we're cooking the flour to get rid of the raw taste even though i prefer in other situations as well as activating it as a thickening agent for the sauce now we'll slowly stream in half a can of condensed milk we want to mix it a little bit at a time so we don't get clumps and then we'll slowly pour in a cup of heavy cream the dairy industry is really creative i guess i spoke too soon because now we're adding three more types of dairy products in there well, at half the cheese we grated earlier. She said in the video, if we did it right, we can melt all the cheese with the heat off. My default assumption with everything in life is that I'm doing it wrong, so I have the heat on low. When it becomes velvety like that, we're mixing the remaining seasonings. While all that's happening, I boiled our pasta in unsalted water. Why is it unsalted, you ask? Because, listen, in life and in cooking, you don't always remember everything. And speaking of not remembering stuff. A tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Trust me on this, it makes it taste so much better. I'm kind of mad at myself for forgetting that, honestly. Heard from multiple sources that's the secret ingredient to a great mac and cheese. But you know what's the secret ingredient to my mac and cheese? Love. Picture perfect, you don't need no filter. Alright, not the kind of love that sound like that. Maybe I should have done this in the pan. This is looking a little thin. Now, I've taken out my pie dish. We'll do a first layer of noodles and sauce, a layer of cheese, and a second layer of noodles and sauce, and a final layer of cheese. Be generous with it. It's your happy place. Maybe I can kill my roommate with this. He's lactose intolerant. This is what two pounds of cheese look like. Just to avoid any cheese drip in the oven, I'm going to put it on a sheet tray. We'll let it chill at 375 for 25 minutes. Kind of looks like a shepherd's pie, but listen to how the cheese is still bubbling. It's kind of hard to edit this footage as my mouth is leaking. All right, let's put it in a bowl. This cheese pull is really impressive. I guess the only thing left to say is let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I guess this recipe has 100 million views for a reason. The cheese flavors are strong and satisfying, but at the same time, I'm not getting tired of it. I feel like I can eat this whole dish if I wanted. It is a little too saucy though. I think I should have done the mixing in a pan on low heat. Forgot the mustard, which is pretty unfortunate. Also forgot the chives on top, which is my favorite way of adding vegetables to a dish. Overall, definitely the best mac and cheese I've ever had for sure. A high score of 9.7 out of 10. It's all downhill from here. The recipes are about to get weird. I'm glad we did this first. And I've never watched a video from Teeny before this. And I have to say, she's so fun to watch. Her genuine personality really comes through in her videos. So, highly recommend. I love celebrity recipes. I really have no reason to, but I care. And since it's Rihanna's recipe, maybe we can call it Recipe. After cutting some bell pepper, I'll make myself cry for a little bit. It might be bad, but it's perfectly good for it. So I'm oiling the pan on medium heat. In goes the onion and just go to work, 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 work. And then putting our bell pepper and cooked pasta and cheese we had from earlier. Here comes the weird part. We'll do a tablespoon of ketchup 
and a tablespoon of mustard. I used Dijon mustard and it kind of looks like yellow diamonds in the sky. Now we're standing side by side. At this point it's done, but you can add as much cheese as you want. Her mac and cheese philosophy can pretty much be summarized by please don't stop the, please don't stop the rat clip. Her mac and cheese is done. We'll put it in the bowl and cut some chives on it. And this bowl smells really good right now. And I'll run for miles just to get a taste. It must be love on the brain. Cheese pulls looking promising. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. It is a little bit weird. It tastes more like a macaroni salad. I do like it, and if you make it, just don't go in with the expectations of it tasting like teeny. As much as I love Rihanna's music, this mac and cheese is a 6 out of 10. Let me tell you something, guys. I've never been to the South, but I just know from my intuition that if you visit someone's house and the hosts sound like this, it's 100% gonna be good food. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be making old school baked mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? Doesn't I just lighten up your day instantly i love this channel she kind of talks in the opposite way of me so pretty exciting and pleasant but anyways as you can see here i'm adding a tablespoon of pasta to a cup and a half of butter and then two tablespoon of sour cream because that's how my mom used to make it slowly adding two cups of cheese i'm using raclette and cheddar here also gonna season it with freshly dried garlic and paprika we're doing four cups of cheese in total and we're only mixing in two cups for now and i guess this is what makes it southern old school because we're making a custard for it starting with 1.5 eggs i'm using half of a recipe so i have to cut it. a cup of milk and a cup of heavy cream and mix it together with a ligament fork the fork is starting to wobble a lot i'm getting a little nervous i think the lf era is coming to an end similar procedure as teenies we'll do a layer of cheese mixed macaroni and a layer of cheese in the center and fill all the gaps with the custard we'll repeat the same steps again i never expected making mac and cheese to be so similar to baking a cake we'll top it off with that old bay seasoning because it looks good and you can't really taste it and put it in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes this non-stick baking dish is changing my life right now the corner pieces must go crazy but you know i only go for the center and i think because of the custard we put in earlier it completely became one piece nothing's falling off or anything it's like a piece of brownie or a regular mac and cheese that set out for too long feeling a little incompetent to eat a mac and cheese that's keeping it together way better than me Maybe I'm delusional, but I can really taste the egg in there. It's not very pleasant. I think it interferes with the flavors from the cheese. But that being said, it's still a pretty solid mac and cheese. Kind of reminds me of Wednesday youth group dinner. So 7.7 .7 out of 10. If you hate washing dishes, this is the recipe for you. It's completely done in this pot. The recipe claims that it doesn't get easier than this. We'll pour just enough water to cover the pasta. Cook on medium high and stir constantly. Adding a little bit of milk. I forgot why I did that. I'm also adding bacon cream cheese because I need to get rid of it. And we'll slowly add in our cheese, obviously raclette, as the pasta cooks. This method preserves all the starch from the pasta so it's going to get thicker and creamier. So just like me, it finishes in less than 10 minutes and kind of looks like carbonara. If this goes well, I'll be making it a lot. After tasting, I've decided to disqualify it as mac and cheese. It tastes nothing like it. It's just a really delicious bowl of pasta. I can see it becoming the best-selling item at Olive Garden. Garden. Finally, the time has come for me to show you my personal favorite recipe for mac and cheese. You might have already guessed, the first step is to grate a lot of raclette. This is actually my last block. We've been using it a lot lately. Should I get a new wheel of raclette and make another episode, or is that getting too old for you? Let me know in the comments if I should retire raclette and introduce a new character. But for now, let's appreciate its thinkiness. Listen, seeing you got so that's about a pound and pretty much all we need. Moving over to the stove, we'll first boil 8 ounces of rigatoni, about a tablespoon and a half of butter, and equal amount of flour. We'll stir and fry up the flour for a little bit to activate its thickening power, then slowly stream in 2 cups of milk. That I got for myself, of course. We'll continuously beat it till creamy. You can do it on the couch if you want. Now you probably are thinking, this is kind of bland, future canoe. Then you'll be right. It's time to infuse it with... <clears throat> Time. Freshly dried garlic, freshly powdered onions, white pepper, and some of that old bay. Dump in about 81% of the raclette we grated earlier. Turn off the heat and just stir it in. I told you, I'm not gonna make that sound. Also, you should remove it before adding the cheese. I guess I gotta work on my time management. 
And the secret ingredient, besides love, of course, is truffle powder. And whenever my annoying roommate tells me he smells truffles in the dish, I just tell him I dip my toes in it. Alright, time to add the pasta to the sauce. Actually, there's too much sauce, so I take it back. Add the pasta to the baking dish first, and then we'll put the sauce on top. And before going to the oven, we'll grate a layer of parmesan, a layer of that remaining 19% raclette, and sprinkle some panko for the crispy texture. Since everything's already cooked and I don't like waiting, we're just gonna broil it for about five minutes it doesn't look really good and do you smell that i think a tradition's coming back what's poppin brand new whip just hopped in i got options i can pass it it's like stocking yeah i couldn't help it there i'm sorry as always let's give it a taste and rate it one through ten I think the flavors of this one is the lightest today. We've only used Swiss raclette and our preparation is fairly simple, so it preserved all the fruity and mild flavor from it. The addition of thyme imposed some herbaceousness that the other ones didn't have. But the most important part of the dish is my personal bias towards it, which makes it almost perfect. So instead of a basic name like macaroni and cheese, I'm gonna call this rigatoni and raclette. The Rick and Rack. It's a killer combo just like Rick and Morty, but a little less scientific. Mac and cheese supposed to be comfort food, but after all this, I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable. So for the foreseeable future, we will not be making any cheese dishes. Anyways, that's it for the video this week. I do have a little request. So I rarely get fast food because I'm fast in other aspects of life, but I want to learn about your favorite fast food hacks or custom order. It could be anything from McDonald's to sweet green. Let me witness how everybody's so creative. You can be as weird as you want, but just don't try to kill me. I'll be checking Instagram messages for the next few days, so let me know. Alright, thank you.